What do you think has been one of the most risky leaps that you've taken in your career? Do you think it was that trip to New York or starting a new series? Ah, uh, both. Mm. The, the main thing is going to New York mm. and seeing a whole change of what I experienced back in Adelaide uh, and to the professionalism and, and, and wanting that discipline of, of, mm. of, of being an artist, of knowing what you want to do and being confident about it. Now, is that developing the confidence of an artist, which I think is crucial to any artist. You can't expect somebody else to, to jump up all the time when they see a work and say, oh, bloody, you're a genius. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't work like that, it doesn't. In the end, hopefully, artists will, will survive in the sense of knowing what they do, they have mm. great great confidence in themselves and great discipline to, to encourage uh, uh, both themselves, as I say, but also how they uh, want to develop that uh, long term. Uh, and that's the risk too, you know, do you stay with uh, a particular style? Or in my case, I didn't want to uh, have a, a particular style, which I it, it, that became my signature, became my, my uh, art signature as such. So uh, I worked in series that uh, once I felt I'd painted enough of that particular series and anything more mm. would be sort of a tiresome experience, both for the viewer and myself. <laughs> so um, there, there's that involved. Um, Do you think it's important to fail along the way to grow as an artist? I, well, I think I like the Edison viewpoint that when somebody asked him about the number of failures that he experienced in finding the, the perfect solution to making the, the light bulb and all the, the phonograph and things like that, he said, I never see them as failures but as discoveries of how not to do things. <laughs> and I, I like that attitude, you know, that, that sort of has accompanied me with everything that I do. Uh, I don't see them as, as, it's an investigation, it's an ongoing investigation and experience of, of life in general in a sense, you know, mm. if you're not selling, if, you, if things you, you feel are, are, are not working for you, give it time, you know, let it settle down. I thought, thought to myself, God, how can you do stuff like this, you know, but and put it away and hopefully, you know, have the mice or whatever sort of chew it up in time. But no, I've come back to it in time and seen, wow, you know, it's got its own you know, uh, particular characteristic. Mm -hmm. That time has sorted out a lot of the problems which mm -hmm. you hadn't anticipated at the time. They've resolved themselves and that time has given it the, the characteristics mm -hmm. of, of what you were searching for after all. You know. And for me, it's important to, you know, not just settle with this one particular style of how I use colour, but to experience the ongoingness of, you know, what type of vehicle, what type of image do I need to contain that, that colour mm. that I want to explore, you know, that range of colour, whatever. But, you know, do I need an image? Do I need an actual mm. form? You know? Can I use, like I've done with the stained paintings, to use the, uh, 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 vastness of, of colour across a large area, uh, mm. just to spread it across the mm. whole area. That was the New York way of thinking at the time I was there, that they wanted to sort of push cubism out of the way and develop, you know, why sort of limit itself within the parameters of the painting? Why can't you break over those parameters and spread it across this whole uh, you know, wall to wall area of paint, of colour, like Newman, right? Barney Newman, there he exactly. is. All the, all the hostility that you know, he had to survive to do that and so on. You know, there are those, those frightening moments of being painted. Mm. <laughs> this exhibition that we're sitting in today, it spans 49 years. It's a remarkable time. period <laughs> of time. <laughs> Um, how do you maintain that vision, uh, remain true to your making over such an extended period of time? Yeah. Well, again, it's, 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 it's wanting to push the boundaries, as it were, you know, to find, okay, I've reached to this stage, 
do I continue that? I, I feel there's more to, more to continue with this, this particular aspect of what I want to do with colour, mm. or should I drop it off here and extend it to another sort of area? Because there's so many tangents to do with a particular problem that you set yourself. It's not one sort of, you know, straight down the narrow path and wow, there it is, all, all this gold at the end of it. It doesn't happen. All you have to do is make one mark on a painting which you hadn't anticipated making. Uh, and it sets off a whole new direction. In my case, it took a sculptor, Anthony Caro, to open up the, the, the passageway. That he took sculpture off the pedestal, spread it across the room. So, okay, what does a poor old painter do? You know, break out from the, from the square, from the rectangle, open up that wall, uh, open up that negative wall space. You bring that negative wall space into a positive aspect of the painting. So that's how I wanted to develop the modules at that early stage. Mm. Uh, and that's continued, it's uh, cutting with other series along the way, but like a lot of those early series, it's still there, the idea, and uh, there's extensions to it that you can use at the much late, later day. Some of the early drawings and thumbnails and things like that that I've developed are quite relevant in today's terms. And I understand you're still charting new pathways. Oh um, yes, I've got heaps of uh, thumbnail ideas down <laughs> in the book. To, Nothing's to, holding you back. Sorry? <laughs> Nothing is holding you no, back. No, no just money. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand also that part of this project has been working with um, urban art projects to oh, realise new work. Yes. Do you want to tell me about that collaborative experience? Well, it came to a, 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 a stage where, because of uh, the medical problems of osteoporosis that, I, that I've got, that I could no longer sort of uh, work on the floor. Mm -hmm. It was too, both too painful and difficult to get <laughs> up. <laughs> so I had to work out other ways of, of what do I do you know, mm -hmm. as a painter, uh, mm -hmm. as an artist. I wanted to use spraying enamel, but who else? Who, who, who was doing that? Who yeah. did that? that and it, as it happened, um, Joanna told me about this mob up, uh, up in Brisbane who were working with artists and architects and uh, produced uh, automotive spraying and all surfaces. And I said, wow, that's, that could be interesting. I had to do the drawings, all these geometrical drawings, all the, all this, all the aspect of sizes and uh, dimensions and so forth send the drawings away to UAP who would then make them up, you know. So I wondered what, how the hell would they you know, come out, you know? I had no idea of um, what that final outcome could, would be. But in turn, yeah, when they came back, uh, they were just superb. They were just exactly how I wanted them. They were so professional. Mm. The finish was absolutely glorious. It's what I wanted. It gave them uh, an earlier uh, reflection aspect of what I was doing with the modulus, mm. to have the viewer, the image of the viewer and the environment sort of come into the surface of the, of the, uh, the modules. Uh, and so that whole part of it was, was absolutely perfect. So in some ways you're still taking risks at this stage oh, in well, your yeah, career. Yeah, coming back yeah. to the risk situation yeah. with me, yes, that was definitely a very big part <laughs> of it. You know, I mean, I'm waiting so... But in the meantime, you know, I'd go off and do a lot of smaller paintings uh, uh, using the hard edge uh, technique. Mm. <laughs> Terrible term, hard edge. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you maintain a joy, a joy in your making? Um, you know, and how do you sort of battle those studio blues that all artists get at certain points in their career? Uh, oh, with, with the stains especially, the way they overcame any blues was to rip the, rip the canvas off fold it up into squares and jump on it madly. <laughs> <laughs> Great strategy. Pleasure. <laughs> but other, and other times I'd throw a whole bucket of paint at it, but it, you know, I felt it wasn't working and I couldn't resolve it. <laughs> but no, with these, uh, 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 it's a sense of, as Terence Maloon has written in the text, a joy to vive. Mm. Uh, and I, you know, the older I get, the, the the less complicated I feel my life and my uh, development of ideas is it being. No, it's just this, you love, I couldn't think of doing anything else 
in life other than being a, 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 an artist. Uh, it, it, it is that, that lovely freedom of expression and, and joy of doing it. You know? It's a sense of being alive in the mm. 21st century and in a time as of the essence for me. Uh, but you know, it's okay, I'll just get on with it. Yeah. Thank you, Sid Ball. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. Yeah, my pleasure. Congratulations yeah. on your show.